I asked many of the interviewees if they were optimistic about the future for libraries. And and there were many mixed opinions about where the libraries were heading and if the future was bright or not. Do you think, that, that even though there's less government funding for libraries, do you think they still will survive? Are you optimistic about the future? We will always need some really good reference uh, areas and, the, and our four main hub libraries uh, will be ideal for places to go when people want to do research. But it, as much as possible, we need libraries that people can go to fairly local. That won't mean everybody can get to a library within walking distance, but it will mean that we'll do our absolute best to make sure that people can get to libraries when they need to. But also, um, we are providing, for those people that can't, the library service will have a mobile library service which will still continue although we are going to be serving the area once every four weeks and not once every three weeks as we've done in the past so there will be a library service a mobile library service going around the smaller villages and the places that haven't got their own static libraries and we are also going to be doing um for those people that really can't get out of their homes, are housebound, the WRVS are going to be doing a home delivery of books. So that we're working very closely with the WRVS in order that the housebound get help and support as well. So do you think there's a... Well, this is the last question. Do you think there's a really optimistic future for a real bright future for the library service within I'm the really excited about the library service in Bath and Northeast Somerset what they what they've managed to do over you know if you look at their history about how they've managed to rebrand the libraries they managed to get new stock in there um, the staff there are, are, are so well motivated and they want to see a better service and I think actually if you're going to deliver anything if you can make any change what you do need to do is take the staff of that organisation on board with you and they come up with some fantastic ideas about how we how we can improve things and you know we need to listen to that we need to embrace that and we need to look at the best way to deliver that and I and you know so I'm, I'm actually really confident about the future of libraries in Bath and North East Somerset. Are you very optimistic about the future for libraries within Baines? Um, well, it's, it's, I, I am, from a personal point of view, I am, I am optimistic. Um, it's quite an interesting time at the moment because obviously, um, there's been sort of political changes locally and we've got a new council, new sort of, um, different sort of council and things. And I think that the, the previous council had said a little bit about you know that it supported the libraries and things, but as I say, we've we've now got a new a new um, sort of setup, so things aren't sort of absolutely clear. But I think libraries, the the council does have a number of main priorities, um, and I think libraries quite clearly input into achieving some of those main priorities. And I think Baines has had a um, uh, a history of. Um, you know, really, really endeavouring to keep libraries open and valuing libraries. And um, sometimes people sort of ask whether libraries are likely to cut hours and that kind of thing. But, I mean, the priority within the library service, obviously the library service gets a budget every year which needs to be balanced. But um, if we do have any cuts, then the main priority is always about frontline services and keeping libraries open. Are you optimistic that... If there's enough public support, there could be more council U-turns on the issue of closing libraries. You know, I, I wish that I could say that I was, but I'm not, because it's it's this sort of thing is kind of insidious. It, it's once it's in the system, it is very very hard to get out. So once you have waste, and once you have a lack of acknowledgement of the needs of communities I think that until you get a complete overhaul because I, I think it's not actually the libraries that need an overhaul <laughs> I think it's local authorities that need an overhaul and I think until the local authorities are reviewed and changed then I think our libraries will be under threat and I'm sorry to say that but it's a fact So you're not very optimistic no, I think that we have to keep working and resisting um, 
the changes that are trying to be imposed by the authorities. Um, I think we have to just keep working against that. But at the same time, I think until something is done about the local authorities themselves, um, then the libraries and many other services will be under threat. Well, yeah, this is something that's gone on for a long time. I mean, I've heard that there's been, it's been 10 years in, there's been constant library cuts in that period and it's just getting worse right now. Yes, yes, I, I think that um, the mismanagement and the people who are actually running the local authorities um, I don't think that um, it's um, visible enough to the public um, exactly what the effects of this mismanagement has, has um, had on the communities. Uh, I did go into a school once and uh, one of the teachers said, do you know, I didn't realise, but I walked past our library for the past six months and it wasn't until the other week that I realised it's actually closed down. People are so busy um, and uh, they're, they're so sort of rushed that they don't see all these things happening around them, all these cuts. I asked Lauren Smith what people can actually do to save their own libraries if the government are cutting the hours or attempting to close the libraries. And this was her response. What can people actually do to save their local library or stop uh, cuts in hours? The first thing I'd recommend is visiting the Voices for the Library website, which is voicesforthelibrary.org.uk. We have a lot of campaigning information on there that we've put together based on our own personal experiences of campaigning at a local level. So I do a lot of work in Doncaster where we've had readings and events really communicating to the council that we value our libraries. All councils have to have a petition scheme where members of the public can express that they are dissatisfied with the decisions being made by the council and they have different levels that they need to reach a certain number of signatures on the petition but when they've reached the level required by the council the council then has to discuss it in a public meeting. It's very possible that we'll see more and more legal challenges against councils where it's clear that they haven't done the requisite amount of work to calculate what the impact of library cuts and closures will be, where they haven't looked at the needs of the most vulnerable, where they haven't looked at their legal obligations under the Public Libraries and Museums Act 1964. There are all kinds of things that people can do. You're tuned into Summer Valley 97.5 FM and in this programme we're looking into the state of libraries today. After I've finished putting these interviews together, I'll got an email from Catherine White explaining about the recent court injunction that Somerset residences put together. I asked Christine Lights a few questions on this subject because in Gloucester there is a court injunction by the residents of Gloucestershire stopping the council from actually closing libraries and cutting back services. So I'm going to leave you with the response I got from Christine Lawrence when I asked her about the whole court injunction situation in Gloucestershire and the possibility of it actually happening within Somerset. I was reading about some councils have decided to cut the library service and they've had legal challenges. I think Gloucester is one of them. Yes, they have. Um, That's going through and I think their judicial review is going to be in mid-September. I can remember reading about one of the councillors. He was quite, oh, I think it was the head of Gloucester Council, was quite upset that the courts actually blocked them. From well, these things happen, and it's the way that people have the right to challenge, and that's the way we have to work. So, Are you, con- are you concerned this would happen in Somerset? It may, it may, yes. I'm not sure that it will, but I'm not sure that it won't, so we'll just have to wait and see. And if we do have a judicial review, then that's... We shall have to stop work and carry on when the judicial review is completed. One thing that everybody agrees on is that libraries should stay open and that they have an important part to play in society. But how they're funded is an ongoing issue. And with library supporters launching judicial reviews against councils, it seems that this is an issue which is going to carry on for quite some time. Thank you for joining me as we've looked into library cutbacks in the local area. My name is Matthew Schoen and I've enjoyed your company over the past hour.
This is an ongoing issue and one we'll probably be returning to at Summer Valley FM. If you have any thoughts arising from this debate, we'd be happy to hear from you. You can contact us at our email address, which is studio at summervalleyfm.co.uk or text SV in your message to 81400. Thank you for listening and until next time, goodbye.